This is really exciting. I have never seen this before. So this booth in particular is one of the biggest at the show. It is Zeppelin Cat's booth. Zeppelin Cat was kind enough to have us buy, give us access before and after the show, take us to dinner. It's been a real treat. We're getting completely spoiled. We've even had a cappuccino or three at their uh, second floor coffee shop slash beer garden. This is the biggest indoor booth, I believe, at the show. And it's a good example of their most common equipment. So there's nothing here that's a real showstopper. They didn't bring a 60-60 shovel with them. I mean, 992 is not bad. That's not a small machine. But they brought their, their true lineup, which is anything from a 301.6 to a 395 CAD excavator. It's a really good example of not just new equipment, but their certified use, their technology, the new battery technology they have, their rental store. It's across the board, Zeppelin, what the heck they do, how they do it. And this is essentially their biggest customer event every three years. Okay, so last Palma, they showed up with some certified used machines. These, well, this is a, it's a full rebuild. CAT certified used, it's a full rebuild. So when you do a full rebuild, you take a machine, you bring it in, you redo the components, the wiring harnesses, hoses, change out of the fluids, undercarriage, paint, all that. So you basically get what is a new machine out of an old frame. The, the problem was you can't really grasp what the machine looks like before they do all of the work. So it, it just looks like a new machine. It doesn't really compute. So what Zeppelin said this time was, well, let's do half the machine and show people what the other half looks like. So this is the CAT certified used part of it. You can see the new cutting edge. And then here you can see this is about 3000 hours. You can see the wear on the cutting edge, which actually isn't that bad for 3000 hours. So this is untouched. And then they cleaned up the other side of the machine. If you come over here, the old worn undercarriage versus the new undercarriage the new undercarriage for only 265,000 euros this machine can be yours well it's probably sold by the time this video is airing sorry if you want another one calls up one caterpillar 992 this is the new 992 uh, this is the biggest machine they have here. They have a 395 over there, but this is the real special one. It comes from Illinois, so pretty close to where I live, a lot closer than, than Germany. They put it on a truck, sent it to the port. From the port, they sent it across the ocean. From the ocean, they sent it up the river to another port, truck, here. The problem with this machine getting it in here is that it's too tall. You can't drive it in. But the problem, you can't just take the cab off because you, you, can't, you can't drive the machine. So what they had to do was they had to put it on the truck, slide it in here very gently with just enough room, bring a crane in here, put the cab onto the machine, make it move, and then drive it into where it is right now. Wow, it's so big, Chase. This is such a big machine. I'm gonna take a nap. So here's something I learned yesterday. Um, skid steers are not all that common in Germany. What's more common for this kind of work is what's behind Chase right here, a small wheel loader. So they sell more of these than they do skid steers, which makes no sense to me. I would take that over this any day of the week because you can just see how freaking enormous this machine is, but I guess it can do a little bit more. But you know what my choice is. Just a fun fact, it's different in every country and Germany loves their small wheel loaders. N06, small wheel loader, but you'll notice that it says electric on the side and it has a blue tray dress instead of the red tray dress. Big difference. And that signifies that it's an electric machine 
It's a prototype, so they have four prototype electric machines here. There's a mini excavator, there's a 320 or 323, and a 950 loader. They all are under testing right now. They've been developing them. He said the excavator yesterday is being developed primarily in Finland, I believe. Yeah, yeah. so they were, they were developed because of regulations saying, hey, you can't run diesel machines here. So they, they had to go develop the, the battery powered machines. Battery powered machines, it's definitely, a, I'd say a theme of Bauma. They're at almost every major, major manufacturer's booth, Caterpillar obviously included. There are specific applications for battery power, like underground mining, interior demolition, places that you don't want to have a lot of diesel emissions for daily use to be determined, but you can use this daily use. They say everything is ideally around an eight to 10 hour life on it. So you can uh, charge it up overnight. You have it all day. When you're using it under rigorous use, battery decreases a little bit, but they said power, product productivity, everything stays the same. And especially on the excavator, they've been testing them for years now, which is, I guess, a good thing. So that's a little spiel on the battery stuff. I will say this, most everything here still runs on old dinosaurs. Another thing Europe has a lot of are these VA booms, variable angle boom. So you can see typically, Chase, typically you have a excavator boom, as you can see right here. It doesn't bend, but this is essentially split in half. Now they only had this available for some of the bigger machines, but their customers said, hey, we want this for the smaller machines, the 306, the 308 size. So Zeppelin said to Kat, hey, our customers really want this. So we're either gonna do this with our customization department or let's do this together. So Kat said, all right, let's do this together. So with the help of Zeppelin, they designed VA boom setups for these smaller machines. The reasoning for the VA boom in Europe, in places like Germany, why they're so sought after is because most sites are really tight. You're working in a really compact area and you just want more flexibility with your machine. So with this VA boom, you don't have to move your machine around as much and you can work in a much tighter area. You just have a lot more flexibility on that machine. And then you pair it up with a spinny thing on the end, like a tilt rotator. And you can do just about anything with this machine that's just a rotating grapple. It's not actually a tilt rotator, but if you put a tilt rotator on the end, there you go, you're in business. So you can do a whole lot with a machine like this, which is pretty cool. We're in the, the 21st century, which a lot of manufacturers st still haven't figured out. Um, it's 2022, there's a lot of online buying nowadays and Zeppelin said, why don't we put our machines online, which I think is a brilliant idea. I told my local cat dealer, I would have bought my skid steer online without a doubt. And so they said, let's do it. So last year they started developing this and now you can go buy a 313 online and not only can you do that, but it also shows the pricing. So it's totally transparent. I can go on here and I can see what the heck is included in this and it's a package. So I can either buy or lease it. I'm totally guessing here because I don't speak this language they do so they could explain it but then i also get this bucket i get the service package <laughs> and i can see exactly what it costs and order it uh also when i when i buy a 313 i get a 100 euro grill coupon yes. they've sold they've sold 30 machines online so it works this is not a party trick take note america yeah yeah so you can see back there is where the engine would be but because of the blue trade dress i know that there's no engine in this machine so all of that is batteries battery banks on cars the tricky thing about battery powered cars is that weight is is a big factor but in an excavator you you kind of want weight back there so it's actually uh in in that in that way beneficial because you don't really need to worry about the weight from the batteries. They're very heavy, but you can throw them back there. It provides a little bit extra counterweight. We have work tools. This is mostly demolition. Right there, you have a, a muncher. There, a muncher. Right there, uh, kind of a sharper, sharper muncher. 
uh, right there, a muncher. And then at the end there, a muncher. So what all these tools do is they, they munch on buildings, concrete, steel, whatever you wanna munch on, they can munch on it. Um, the, the unique things about work tools that I saw when I was here in April, especially in Switzerland, was that the Europeans freaking love their work tools. They like to process everything and that's largely driven by their recycling requirements. So a lot of machines or a lot of buildings, they need to be recycled to sometimes 100%. Everything needs to be recycled and processed. So they need these specific tools to do the demolition in a very precise manner because they can't just throw it all in a truck and haul it to the landfill. They need to sort the wood out, the metal, the concrete. They need to process the concrete, separate the rebar. Everything is processed on site. So that's where all of these munchers, processors, wook tools come into play. And now we have a great example of me versus the guy she tells you not to worry about. So in a demolition application, this is one of the main work tools, a grapple, rotating grapple, because you can, you can rip a building down and you can sort super effectively. You can pull everything out, put it in piles, rotate the grapple around. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And then as I said, most machines, especially in a demolition application, have that variable angle boom. So that is much bigger than the 306 we had over there it's a 330, still variable angle boom. Yes, the machine's a lot more expensive. Yes, it adds weight to the machine, but a lot more flexibility. I asked why they, why they put these blades on the fronts of their graders. You'll see them sometimes in the States, not all that common though. I've seen them in almost every grader out here. They do it because if a truck comes in and the truck, well, sometimes truck drivers, just, they kind of do their thing. They the dump everything in a big old pile. To knock that down, if you don't have a dozer with you, that would be the tool to do it. But if you're just working with the blade, this, you can lower this front blade here and knock that pile down before you then lift this up and can start doing the grading with your actual mold board. A clever little deal here. It's an indicator to tell you when your blade is level on basically even with your your mold board exactly yeah. uh, so you can see as he raises it it'll go up uh, but right now since it's even it's it's even so you can see that from the cap so what, what's going on right now but they're all in their sales meeting right now so Bauma the big difference between Bauma and Con Expo well there's a lot of differences we're in Germany we're in Germany Con Expo Vegas but <clears throat> The, the big thing, Con Expo is more of like a, oh, let's hang out, let's talk about stuff, let's go drink some beers and, and party in the evenings. It's less about, let's go sell machines. Here, it's a lot about selling machines. This is Zeppelin's biggest sales event, period. So all of these sales reps all throughout this booth, they said there's 700 Zeppelin people at the show, which is wild. They're all talking to customers, selling machines, they even have, there's, there's beer coasters up there where you can sign essentially uh, as, as, as like a, I don't know if it's an actual purchase contract, but it's, it's saying like, yes, I'm gonna go buy this machine. Beer coasters. So what they do in this meeting to explain is they highlight the previous day's sales and give credit to whoever had the biggest sales day. Um, ignore the German sales meeting going on behind me. We're doing important journalism. So you can see, here is a small wheel loader. Here's your engine. Here's your after treatment. Here's your fuel. All of this to go make power for this machine. Over here is the electric machine. You will you will notice there's there's no engine. There's no after treatment. And there's no fuel tank because different power system. But same machine, Caterpillar 988XE. The XE means it's electric drive. Still have a diesel engine, but the diesel engine then converts it to electricity. And what's driving the actual uh, machine are electric motors. So you're taking diesel energy, diesel fuel, converting it. You're fine. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> 
you're converting diesel to electric to drive the machine. That's the basic explanation. The thing about this is it's way more efficient, so you burn a lot less fuel. They said this machine will burn up to 50% less fuel, which is a really big deal. And that's why it's standard in Germany because of fuel burn, fuel prices are so expensive. They're always trying to figure out how do I, how do I reduce fuel consumption? So that's why Corey's have largely gone to the 988XE. He said almost every 988 they sell is now a 988XE. You'll see them in the States every once in a while, but you won't see them all that often. This guy right here is running a D5 in Arizona. Tucson, Tanaha Hills, just outside of Tucson. I was I've been there many times. I've run a bulldozer. I've run exactly where he's running a machine right now. I know exactly where this is at Tanaha. So we are in Germany running a machine in Arizona. And you can see, not only can he see his blade, front, reverse, just a general overview of the area, but you can see what you would see within the cab all of your, you know, your, your uh, different numbers, et cetera. Grade control as well. Yeah, yeah. And then right next to it is your grade control setup. So you can see right there that he has the autos engaged while he's running this thing. And you can see as he's passing over that red, it's turning green. So this is a Railroad excavator. Railroad excavator, exactly. Because it has the high rail set up, so you can drive it around on the road, put yeah, yourself so, on the track, so exactly, and then yeah. it lifts the whole machine so, up. Yeah, you. What you do is basically you drive on the track on the rail. Yeah. Uh, you put down the rail axles, the machine is lifting itself up, and then you can go. It's not propelled by the tires. Exactly, and that's the main difference. Yeah. Propelling itself with the uh, rail wheels. Yeah, you can see the drive motors there, because typically. Typically, the, the rubber tire would be resting on the rail and then you would drive it with the typical controls and this is basically just, yeah, for guidance essentially. Yeah, yeah, but this would be driving it. Why is, why is it different for this machine? Uh, because it's, it's, uh, it has got advantages like that. See, you're lifted above the rail and all the rail infrastructure like sensors and everything yeah. are not touched by the, by the, by the uh, tires. So uh, we are running like a train basically. Okay. Plus advantage is you have a lot of wear on the, on the inside tire if you propel the machine on the rail and you, you have to change basically the tire every, I don't know, Depending on the on how the operator is um, using the machine, but often. Interesting. Why does it look like that around the counterweight? It's because we wanted to make it a short radius machine. Yeah. The back radius is only 1.56 meters. So uh, when you turn it 90 degrees, it's, it's more or less here. Yeah. Which means you can uh, work in very narrow construction sites and tunnels and cities. Um, so we needed to uh, make it a very compact machine to, and to, to put as much counterweight in it as possible. We need to, uh, to pull it that high. Uh, the counterweight's molded like that. Wow. Hydrostatic drive? Hydrostatic drive, short, heck, uh, short, uh, short, short radius. Damn. These things are wild. Caterpillar 4.4 liter engine. 129 kilowatts. Um, it can go, what is that, 160 uh, kilometers per hour? It goes 160 kilometers fast, you know. What? Does it really? No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, that, that only means oh. trains can pass, pass at, at 160? 160 oh, man. You almost just got me so excited. <laughs> this just no, ripping no, down the rail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> The need for this in Europe is, if anybody's ever been to Europe, you go everywhere really on commuter rail. Commuter rail doesn't exist in the States, it's all freight primarily. It does, sorry Amtrak, but I mean, I don't, I don't know of anybody that regularly uses Amtrak. So, <clears throat> since there's so much more rail in these tight urban areas, they need a specialized machine to do the rail maintenance, and that's exactly what this offers. So you can, uh, 
Okay. Yeah. You can put different work tools on this machine, obviously. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. It's oil quick. It's oil quick. Yeah. yeah. So you have all your different work tools. This machine specifically, it's it basically tamp is, tamps yeah. the ballast yeah. around the, the exactly. ties. Exactly. It, so it's it's not tamping it around it, but it, making it more compact. Okay. So the visibility is really good too because you're so high up. Okay. So we're currently in a rail excavator, and I am in I'm in the back seat. <laughs> I love this. I love this. I've seen, you've seen this one. I've never seen these running. I so I this is really exciting. I have never seen this before. <laughs> oh wow. Oh my gosh. Okay. So you can walk up here and do whatever you need to do. And then there we go. I'm sure these are not cheap. <laughs> That's a good guess. Yeah. I think all ex all excavators should have a, a second yeah. cab. So is there always somebody back there? No. Oh. It's, it's depending on the construction site and what the safety of, uh, officer says. So it has suction, so you don't need a pump to fuel it? Exactly. Really? Yeah. It's got an internal <laughs> pump driven electrically, so you can switch that on here, and then you suck out of it. So you, you just, you, you turn that on, and you basically just put a hose. There's a hose here, there's a hose in, in there. There's a, oh, there's so a you already have there. it. So you just hose attach the hose, hose there, hose on, put it into your barrel of fuel, the, uh, your here. five gallon gas can from the, from the, uh, the, 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 the gas station. The gas station. Yeah. Maybe you take a bigger one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love specialized equipment. One nice feature I want to explain to you, and then you're free to leave. There's the, there's the hydrostatic drive, um, which you can see here, and we also have a hydrostatic brake, which means we have seven, eight different stages. You can either go on one, once you take your foot off the, off the pedal, uh, it just uh, still moves like 30 meters or so. If you're on eight, it's really braking. Hmm. It's like a little bit like sitting in an uh, electric-driven car. Yeah. Once you take the, uh, the foot off the, the pedal, it's uh, recuperating. Yeah. Uh, and really braking, which means you have perfect traction. You don't need to use the brakes. And uh, yeah, so that makes it really easy to operate. Nice to meet you. I'm Renato. I'm from Portugal. I'm a big fan of you. Very and cool. I, uh, Very cool. Construction company also. Is that right? Yeah. In Portugal, In huh? Portugal, yeah. That's and, awesome. Uh, I saw that you uh, came here to Palma. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yesterday. Can I take a picture? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hey. It's Portugal too. <laughs> Aaron. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hopefully, hopefully we make it to Portugal one day. Yeah. yeah. We'd love to visit.